Are you ready? Are you going to be on the TV show? Okay. This is my dog, Callie, and Callie is a very good dog. She's just sometimes not very smart. One of the things we like to do is take little family trips to different parks and different places and go on lots of hikes and walks and stuff, and we have to pack our water and dog treats and all of the usual supplies. <laughs> One of the other things we have to bring along with us is Callie's special dog water bowl. Now, the thing with the dog water bowl that we quickly learned when she was little is that she will not drink from it if it is gross dog water, which is well below her very high standards. So Callie here, no matter how hot it is, no matter how long you've been walking, and no matter what, if she sees you fill her water bowl with gross water from a fountain or a water pump or something like that, she will not drink it under any circumstances. However, we eventually figured out a neat little trick. If we instead pack her water inside of a water bottle and pretend to drink from it and then pour a little inside of her dog water bowl, she will drink it down in two or three gigantic gulps and spill it everywhere. I like to think that the creative process itself can be subject to the same line of lateral thinking because sometimes you just need a new approach to break out of those creative walls or break through that creative rut you've been stuck in. With that being said, in this video, we're going to use the power of the Reason 11 rack, a couple of free VSTs, and the sound of me reading the synopsis of the 2007 classic Bratz the Movie, and turn it into an amazing drowning soundscape. Good morning, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. In today's episode, as I mentioned, we're going to be turning the sound of me talking into this amazing droning soundscape thing, and this is a really cool technique I discovered a couple of weeks ago. I'm always on the hunt for new and interesting techniques when it comes to sound design, and I find it especially inspiring when I find something that teaches me a new way to approach something I've already done like a million times. So a couple of weeks ago, I was up really late one night reading a bunch of ambient production techniques, and I found a post that I think was maybe on Reddit or maybe KVR, and I looked through my internet history and I couldn't find the thread I was on to credit the person who posted this technique, unfortunately. But I found this really interesting post that had a pretty neat idea. The operating theory behind this whole thing goes something like this. We're going to talk into a microphone. We're going to stretch it out and reverse it. We're going to put that through a pitch correction tool, then we're going to stretch it into oblivion using Paul stretch, add some effects, and we will get these crazy droning soundscapes. Now, why I found this particularly interesting is because I didn't actually believe it would work. I thought it would be heavily dependent on the source material and just be more trial and error than anything. Over the last couple of weeks, I've really put this technique through its paces, and I was very pleasantly surprised to find that pretty much every time you get something that's not only really usable, but also very musical and just sounds really good. It's a very low effort technique that produces really stunning results. If the techniques in this video helped you create something, feel free to share it with me because I'm always curious to hear what you guys are working on. And if you're ready to share your music with the world, why not check out my friends over at DistroKid. I use DistroKid myself for all of my releases and I really have no complaints and I'm honestly not sure why you would use something else. DistroKid makes it fast, efficient, and cheap to get your music out there to all of the major retailers in the known universe. With only a handful of clicks, you can upload your song, your artwork, and get it distributed to all the major platforms in only a couple of minutes. For only $20 a year, you can upload unlimited releases, so even if you're really cranking out new material, you can easily upload it without any extra fees or hidden anything, and keep 100% of your earnings. DistroKid goes beyond just standard digital distribution, because they can also help you get a verified Spotify checkmark, a YouTube artist account, and a whole lot more. If you're ready to share your music today, you can use my VIP link down in the description below to save 7% off your first year. Callie here is about to fall asleep, so I think it's about time we put her back in her beagle bucket and hop in the DAW to get started. Do you have anything you want to say before we get started, bud? Okay. Okay, so here we are in the DAW, and I've got my project in front of me here. As you can see, we have the original, this is the stretched audio, the Paul stretched version, and then the final result. As I mentioned in the intro of the video, all you really need to do this is just the sound of you talking. In my case, I read an excerpt from the plot synopsis of the Bratz movie, and it sounds like this. 
Yasmin Jade, Sasha, and Chloe, our best friends in fashion, mavens, the well-dressed quartet, faces unexpected challenges to a lifelong bond. Which sounds absolutely stunning. I found to get the best results for this technique, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, you want to avoid excessive sibilance. If you have something with a lot of S's or things like that, the best thing I found that you can do is just like, you know, kind of mute it or avoid those types of words. Otherwise, you could just kind of like place your hand in front of your mouth so you don't get as much sibilance like this. Otherwise, you could just... <laughs> Thing number two, as I'm sure you noticed, is you want to speak very slowly. This way, the pitch detection stuff has something to grab onto. If you're speaking at a normal pace, it doesn't really work all that well. You can get little bits and pieces, but for the best results, you want to talk really slow. Consideration number three is to speak in a variety of different pitches. Now, this is something I actually had a bit of trouble with. I have a pretty low voice, so when I first tried this, it didn't really work well because my normal speaking voice is very low. So I kind of have to like, you know, talk up here and be a bit brighter and also speak really high and then really low. And this is just so the pitch detection algorithm has a bunch of different stuff to tune from. If you speak very monotone, it's just going to kind of be one droning note, which can work. But I think it's a bit more interesting to kind of leave the whole thing to chance. So now that we've got the bass recording, let's take a look at how we're going to process it. The first thing you need to do is just stretch this recording out. Your DAW will probably have a different way of doing this. If you're not sure how to do it, check the manual. But what we do here is just right click and scale 200%. Now we've got this stretched out and it's going to sound kind of weird. Yasmin which is kind of funny and weird on its own, but you might want to experiment with different stretching algorithms because some of them give better results than others. In the case of Bitwig, I find stretch is a bit gross sounding at times, so Elastique tends to provide much smoother stretching results. Now what we need to do is reverse this recording, so I'm just going to use Shift R and away we go. Let's listen to it backwards. Equally hilarious and equally weird. This is a great way to add spooky subliminal messaging to your tracks. Now we've got this stretched out recording and we're going to get started with the first instance of the Reason Rack to begin the processing chain. First up here I've got Neptune which is a pitch correction plugin. I've got the formats enabled and shifted this down. This can just make things a bit more interesting and I've also transposed everything up an octave. This is mostly just because I have a very low voice. You might need to experiment with this. Just depends on kind of the timbre of your voice I guess. Next up, I just drew in a custom scale here. So this isn't really a scale, this is more based around a chord. So it's kind of like a C minor seven, but I've also got a two and a four in here. So maybe do a scale. I find pentatonic minor works really well. Otherwise, just kind of draw in the notes of a chord and there you go. Since you're speaking in a variety of pitches, it should give you different notes across different octaves and sound pretty decent. If we go in and bypass this other stuff here, with just the tuning enabled, we get this. Which is like super weird and creepy, but we can enhance this a little bit with some basic effects. To clean it up a bit, I've got an EQ here. I'm just high passing and low passing. This also helps get rid of any excessive sibilance in the recording and just kind of tames it a little bit. You can also experiment with the EQ before the pitch correction as sometimes the sibilance and stuff can really mess with it. So just experiment with the order of operations here. Just don't do any time-based effects before the pitch correction or do because there's really no rules. So I've smoothed it out here with a bit of EQ and that's really all I'm doing is just using this for a filter more or less. I didn't really need to touch anything else. This then feeds into an echo. This is a really, really nice delay. I've just got a ping pong delay going on here. The time is pretty long at about 900 milliseconds or thereabouts, I find works pretty well. Feedback is relatively high. The color isn't too excessive. If you distort too much early on, it just gets mushy. So a little bit of color is nice, 
but you don't want to do too excessive of processing in the earlier parts of this. In terms of modulation, I prefer to leave this off. I find adding any excessive modulation can kind of screw up the later results. However, a little bit of modulation can be nice to add almost kind of a tape drift effect, which is going to be much more pronounced in the following steps. Finally, to mix it, I've just got it mixed into taste here just below noon. So just experiment with that. And then finally, this is just fed into a standard RV7000 here. This is the default preset. I just cranked up the decay time and blended in the dry wet to be pretty wet, but preserve a little bit of the dry signal just for some clarity. Otherwise, things get kind of mushy. So after the first instance of the Reason Rack here, which is not a whole lot, as you can see, we get this. And if we open up maybe the low pass a bit. You can get some really usable vocals this way. You really don't need to go any further than this. You could easily go through, chop out some of the nice bits and use them in your track, which I've actually done a little bit of and it works really well. However, the real magic for the big drones is the next step here. This bad boy right here is Paul X Stretch. And if you're at all familiar with Paul Stretch or maybe my videos on Cecilia, you'll get the idea of what's about to happen here. We're going to take this sound and stretch it out into absolute nothingness. And that is the magic of Paul Stretch. I was a very big fan of Paul Stretch for a very long time. It was just kind of tedious to work with and exporting sounds took ages in some cases. Paul X Stretch here offers many of the same features just as a VST. So I can do this in my DAW and experiment with things and render them instantly and then just record the results. It makes it a lot faster to do cool Paul stretchy stuff. This is what created the final result here. I captured a little bit of the sound, stretched it out by a factor of eight, and then adjusted a couple things like the ratio mixer and some other stuff. And I'm gonna demonstrate this here now. So I've got a duplicate copy here. We're gonna do this in a new instance of Paul X Stretch. What we're going to do is hit play and then hit capture. It's gonna capture a little bit of it and then we're gonna start messing with it just so you can get an idea of how to tweak these things to get some good results. Let's skip ahead here and maybe find a point where things start to get interesting. Okay, right there should be good. Okay, so what we're going to do is hit play, capture a little bit of that and then we're gonna mess with the settings. Cool, so we've got things going now. We're gonna highlight where we want this whole thing to start at, probably this region. We'll go to the back button here, and that will restart playback. Now we can start messing with the pitch shift and stuff. Let's leave it at zero. Let's maybe increase the stretch amount to 15. We can increase uh, maybe the FFT size a little, just to get a bit more blur. That sounds pretty cool. Let's uh, go to the ratios here. We'll check this by clicking this box, then we can go to the ratio mixer and start messing with these settings. So let's get rid of the original and go with the octave down. And maybe double. Maybe a little bit of 1.5. Maybe a bit of the original as well. Let's go back to the beginning and listen again. Maybe we'll change the stretch amount to something a bit less extreme, like six. And change the FFT size again and find something with a bit more air. And why not? Let's mess with the pitch shift again. Let's take it down a fourth. And if we add a little bit of gain here, We can get some really epic washy droning pads and now we can finalize this with another instance of the reason rack and we're done okay so i'm going to enable the original capture i did and show you the settings i used to get the final result and then you can recreate this as you wish so this is the original and what i did is actually just mess a little bit with convolution so the convolution reverb here rv7000 
let's turn that down, is actually capable of loading in custom samples. So let's dig through here and maybe find something from one of my Foley packs. Want to make sure it's stereo. I guess that. We'll drag it in here. Now we can use pulverizer. Maybe change the scream settings here. And then maybe experiment with the EQ. And then for good measure, let's throw on one of these. And now away we go with this epic droning soundscape. So I think that wraps everything up for this video. I thought this was a really, really fun technique and it's definitely something I'm gonna be using more of myself. I'm also going to experiment with maybe taking some of these sounds and putting them into grain or maybe Falcon or something like that just to see what else I could get out of it and maybe experiment with just something that's a bit more monotone so I can play it back as more of an instrument. I'm not really sure. I think it's a really fun technique. I think it's very low effort and gives you some epic, epic results, which I'm all about. And that does it for this video. So thanks for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys again soon.